You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and welcome yet to another wine-packed episode of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And I am very pleased and honored to have a very good friend and personality, NPR, Mr. Ray Hardman. I'm glad to be here, guys. I, I love how you put me in the middle, the two tall guys in the middle, and they put the, 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 the short guy in the middle. But uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it. So let's drink. No, I, I, we got to wait. We got to wait. Well, as, as some of you know, uh, Ray has a band, and they've done the musical introduction to our show, and also the end credits. Yep. And uh, we've had a lot of feedback on that. And um, Good feedback? Good feedback, feedback. Only good feedback. Great feedback. <laughs> and we want to just thank you, now that you're here in person with us, oh, thank you I'm, for doing the music for the show. Oh, my pleasure, my and pleasure. we used another song of yours for the outro, uh, the, the credits at the end. And Great, great. I, I think it gives There's the more where that came from. Well, that's so. good. <laughs> and one of the reasons I wanted to include Ray on this show is because he had the fortune to travel to Argentina and try a lot of different Malbecs, and just like Spanish wine or Argentinian wine in general. And uh, for those who don't know this, Ray and his wife are quite accomplished opera singers, which is why they actually got to travel to Argentina. Yep. So yep. whether or not you want to serenade us later on after a few glasses <laughs> of wine, we'll see where the show takes us. All right. So, but uh, today's show is on Malbecs. And uh, Jim, I know me and you both love our Malbecs. We do. And like most of the grape varietals we found on this show, the Malbec grape got its start in the Bordeaux region of France. That is true. And it was in the mid-1800s that they finally transplanted it over in Argentina. I hope I'm not stealing your thunder here. Oh, please, please, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, but when you drink a French Malbec, you get a, a very tannic structure to the wine. That's what the French love. Um, if you drink an Argentinian Malbec, it tends to have a lot more plush texture to it, not so much of a tannic note. And then if you get the Chilean uh, version of the Malbec, that's got a little more tannin, but nowhere near as much as the French version. Mm. So what we're going to taste tonight is actually going to be, uh, I would compare it more to a California version of a wine than a French version of a wine. And that is true, because we're going into these three bottles, at least in front of us here, um, as new tasters. We haven't, I haven't tried any of these. None of them. Nope. Jim neither. or Ray hasn't. Nope. Um, these come recommended to me by a, a local distributor. And um, so I told them that I wasn't going to say they were good if they're not good. So if they're good, thumbs will be up. If they are bad, thumbs will be I'm down. Not afraid to give the thumbs down. Absolutely. So I noticed here that you've got um, you've got a, a regular Malbec, just a Malbec Malbec, Correct. and then you've got two blends. Is is a Malbec a good blendable? It's a great grape? blending grape, and yeah. that's in fact that's what the French did with the Malbec uh, when they first produced it. They were blending it with a lot of other grape varietals, and if you the traditional term Bordeaux encompasses six different grapes, and they can blend those six different grapes in any kind mm. of variation to come up with Bordeaux. Yeah. Uh, but the Malbec is one of those grapes. And that's actually one of the progressions we'll have tonight. We're going to start off with a Malbec, a blend of two, which I think is a Syrah and a Malbec, and then the end here, which is a blend, I think, of four different varietals. And the one at the end will be a Spanish, so it'll be see, interesting to see how the Spanish compares to the Argentinian. And um, why don't we pour our first glass and dive right into our tasting. So we're going with an Aqua di Pedra, which is from the Mendoza region of Argentina. Mm. And I think you had an opportunity to travel there, correct? I was. I, we, we spent uh, several days in Mendoza, and you cannot escape Malbecs when you're in Mendoza. And it's a beautiful metropolitan city. Um, they have, uh, you know, anything a, a modern city, it, you know, it, it has everything that a modern city you would expect from a modern city. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get outside of the city, right away you notice the vineyards. There are probably hundreds of, of bodegas, hundreds of winemakers uh, in the Mendoza region, not make, uh, making more than just Malbecs, lots of other things too, Cab Sabs and Chardonnays and, and that type of thing. Yeah. But they've really uh, pride themselves on the Malbec. 
and, it, and uh, prices are very reasonable too, generally on Malbecs, especially yeah. here in the in the states. Now, do you know the price points on? I what do, we're and we'll, tonight? we'll divulge those okay. at the end of the show. I don't, don't want to jade anybody, <laughs> but I could already smell a little something. Yeah, you get a, a lot of mm. aroma off of this. Okay, cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. cheers. Heavy legs and also a heavy aftertaste on that. It's yeah. a little uh, yeah, very long finish. Um, hard on the on the going down. It's I, I get a little plum with that, um, and like I said earlier, not a whole lot of tannin. No, not it's at had all. acidic for me, um, but that could be just me because I don't have the palate that you guys have. Well, but uh, but I like it. I like it. Everybody has a different palate. Yeah, and that's that's the great thing about doing this show is we get to try a lot of different wines. And hopefully, you know, some are going to appeal to Bob's palate, some are going to appeal to mine, and mm -hmm. then everybody else watching out there can find something for their palate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a little harsher than I was anticipating. I mean, I, I think as, as our listeners or watchers know, and Jim knows, I tend to like a more tannin-laced wine. That's mm -hmm. why I tend to like the French wines. There is definitely not a lot of tannin in this not, at all. Not much, and that's the Argentinian style. But that's not either, neither good nor bad, but it's just one of the things that comes across to me right away. And this is 100% Malbec. Correct. Okay. One thing I will have to say about the, the Malbecs that I tried when, when I was in Mendoza, they, had a, they were much fruitier than this, actually. Um, they had a, a, a cleaner, fruity taste to me. Um, I don't know whether that has to do with uh, maybe the freshness or the, in, in transport, uh, that type of thing. But It's um, a good point because they do add sulfites to anything that's important. Yeah. That, that could be. Yeah. But, um, that's that's something for another whole show because some people say it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And other people say it makes quite a difference. And um, I don't know what my opinion is on that because I don't think I've ever had a wine that didn't have the sulfites in it. I've, I've had a couple that were uh, you know, supposedly green wines that had were all natural and didn't have sulfites and had been grown. I've under. seen them in the wine store, but I've never tried them. Yeah. yeah, and those are hit or miss, too. Now, Ray, you will notice, as the guest, you have the bigger glass. Oh. <laughs> so if you, if you know that right off the bat, so uh, don't let that we, change. We like to take oh, care okay. of our guest. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, all right. <laughs> so this first one, even though it hasn't had a chance to breathe, we only opened up about 20 minutes ago. For my taste buds, I'm going to say it's okay, at least for now. I might come it's, back to it. It's a decent wine. I'm getting a little tobacco now that we've had a little bit more of it, um, which I find interesting. Not something I'd want to drink all night, but uh, I, I enjoyed this. That's probably what I would say about this. It's a good wine to maybe have a glass of, but it's not something that you can drink the whole night. At least I couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just a little too harsh for me. Um, it doesn't have that smoothness. That, I, will, uh, I will say like the second and third sips were coming a lot easier. Yeah, your so, palate changes yeah. as it adapts to the wine. Exactly. It also could need to be opened up a little bit, too. I mean, I, I, I know sometimes up reds do need to breathe a We've little bit. We've got to start bringing the decanter to the show. You know, <laughs> I can only carry but so But again, much. you know, there are so many, there, there are so many um, uh, wineries in the Mendoza region making Malbecs that, you know, you, you're going to, there's going to be lots of uh, different uh, variety. Uh, when it comes to the, the taste of the wine. Well, going, going back to what you were saying earlier about how you were tasting a lot of fruity Malbecs, yeah. is that more uh, appealing for your palate? I think with so, I think so. Um, and, and you know, most of the time I was pairing it with food, uh, which could make a big difference That makes a too. huge difference, yeah. 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 That's actually true with a lot of wines, especially things like Malbec or Italian wines or French mm -hmm. wines. The food pairing does make a big difference. You know, when you've got, of course, in, in Argentina, they, they serve these humongous steaks with the chimichurri sauce oh, on yeah. top, and, and something like this is just perfect uh, for, a, for a big, thick steak. And now you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you handle your wine drinking, obviously, after the singing, or because uh, obviously you sang later in the evening? Well, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, everything starts and ends ridiculously late in Argentina. I mean, we would do concerts that didn't start until 9, and they were scheduled for 8, and mm -hmm. then, then you You'd go, and then the restaurants would stay open till midnight, one o'clock, yeah. and uh, so did, everything. We just... We don't know what we're doing here. I know, I know. <laughs> it was, it was, it was great. So, yeah. All right. Well, the first one I'm going to 
not give an actual opinion on yet. Just right now, I'm going to You guys don't have a rating anything. system or anything. It's thumbs up it's or thumbs, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Oh, okay. Okay. There is Very the thumb and the half thumb. All right, I'll give, you, half I'll give it the half thumb. Yeah. All right. All right. So the next one maybe <laughs> will be more appealing to my taste buds because it's a blend. And mm -hmm. I do love Shiraz. So uh, am I saying that right, Jim? Shiraz? Sure. Uh, Shiraz or S Shiraz? The, the, Shiraz. The French Shiraz and the Australian version is the Shiraz. All right. So and this they're is the same thing. Same it's grape. the same grape. Okay. Okay. So this one will be the Los Elios. And this is also an Argentinian, and this is a mixture, or it's a blend, as people say, and it's a mixture of Syrah and Malbec. This color looks a little lighter than the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've mentioned this before, but when, when you do a blend, when a winemaker creates some kind of blended wine, what they're trying to do is, is get a specific flavor or taste out of the wine. So they have an advantage over the vineyards that are trying to produce just a, a single varietal. Uh, you know, if you have a single varietal, you're stuck with whatever just came out of the ground. Right. When you're blending, you can add a little more of this, take a little of this away, and, and get the desired taste that you're, you're trying to achieve. But it's not necessarily smoothness? It might be smoothness, uh -huh. if that's your goal. Yeah. Uh, if you're creating a wine for Bob, you want a lot of tannin. Yeah. And once again, this is from also the Mendoza region of Argentina. Yeah. And I think that's um, going to be pretty popular. When you were in Argentina, that's where a lot of the wines actually come from. Oh, Actually. yeah. Though oh, there are yeah. other vineyards outside of the Mendoza region. And, and i got to say, uh, wine is ridiculously uh, affordable in Mendoza. I would imagine. Yeah. All right. All right. Not a lot of aroma on this one, by the way. No. Very little nose. A lot more tannin. Which kind of surprised me. I thought this would actually be a little smoother since they, they blended in some Syrah. Now, you see, right off the bat, completely different for me. This is smoother than the first one. I take, At least for me. You don't think so. I, I don't find it that way. But Fascinating. Another Spock moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, way smoother, um, but um, not as uh, complex. Not, that, that's that that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. exactly right. It's definitely yeah. not as complex. Easier to drink, though, which, you know, for some people that might be better because um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not attacking my throat like the first one yeah. did. But Right, and it, you know how we commented earlier that we could have just a little bit of that first one and then be done with it for the night. Mm -hmm. I, I think I could continue drinking this throughout the evening. It's, it's more pleasant on the palate. Yeah, and that's something for our viewers to be aware of. Um, when you go into a store to look for, if you're looking for a Malbec after seeing this show and you want to go buy a Malbec, there's going to be a lot to choose from. Um, there's going to be blends. There's going to be 100% Malbecs. And as we've said before and as Jim has said before, don't be afraid to try something. Go to the tastings. If they're going to do a Spanish tasting or if they're going to do an Argentinian tasting, mm -hmm. try it before you buy it to see if you're going to like it. Obviously, I did not do that. I just took a shot and got these three bottles today, which is sometimes good to do too. If the price isn't Always too, fun. yeah, if it's Always not too fun. price prohibitive, I would definitely say give something a shot you're not familiar with. And, um, and I'm sure, Ray, when you were in Argentina, you gave a lot of things a shot that you weren't familiar with. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and you know, I was I was never disappointed. But then again, I wasn't, you know, going into it with a very discerning yeah. uh, palate. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, you're in Rome. Do as the Romans exactly, do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What kind of food did you generally eat when you were? Uh, Again, a, a lot, lot of meat, of, right? A lot of meat, uh, beef. Uh, and this is kind of this is the kind of wine that would accompany meat very well. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and it, you, you mentioned a chimichurri sauce, yeah. which has a little bit of a spice to it. Yes. A little kick. Yes, another um, big dish in in Argentina is empanadas. Oh, and again, those. this is perfect for yeah. for an empanada. That's sort of like the burrito type thing. Yeah, like a yeah. like a deep fried. Dumpling, yeah. Sounds fattening and mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I don't actually think I've ever had an empanada. <laughs> I've had a few, and they were delicious. They're always, always good. I don't think you've ever made me one, Jim. That's one that you haven't <laughs> put on I'll your I'll do uh... that for the next wine dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one I'm definitely going to say I like a little bit more than the first one. But I am going back to the first one before the end of the show just to give it another we'll shot. Run through it again. Yeah. All right. I think we're giving a final verdict. All right. And I don't know if we ever talked about this in the past. Um, I actually brought the technically correct glasses for red wine. Mm. Most of the time, you've probably seen us use these. I know these are technically the most, the more correct glasses for red wine. More correct. Uh, I was going to do a whole show on the Riedel glasses, which are perfectly precision made for a specific type of wine, and they've got you know 20 different glasses for 20 different varietals. But Right. It, obviously, you it, don't want to break your pocketbook, yeah. but I think the only reason that some people say these are better for reds is they're wider. They let the red open up a little bit more in right. the glass. And oh. the other thing you want to pay attention to is when you tilt the glass up to your mouth, where's the wine hitting your tongue? 
Yes. The glass will actually determine, the shape of the glass will determine where the wine hits your tongue. And that, make, that believe it or not, does make a difference when you're tasting different varieties. So, Ray, you might be having a whole different experience this evening because your glass is a little different than ours. Okay, all right. <laughs> so if you start acting erratically, we will understand why. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on to the Spanish wine. The this, is a, this is a blend also? This is a, this is a blend of four. This is a Protocolo. Um, it's one of the higher rated wines that he said he's had feedback on for the price point for a Spanish. And um, the varietal of grapes that it's blended in it, I do not recall. I know it's four different types. I know Baalbek is in there. I think a, um, a Syrah's in there. Okay. The other two I cannot recall, but it is four different grape varietals. In this there are one. so many different grape varietals. I, you and I are never gonna get to taste all of them. There are hundreds and hundreds of little teeny grape varietals that you just, uh, they grow them in one little spot in the world and that's the only spot they grow them. In. If you have one or two bottles, if you find one or two bottles in your lifetime, you're lucky. So, And that's I, one thing that we do this show. Obviously, we don't want to get too overly technical. So when you see a bottle that we think is really good, go by what we say um, and what we say is available locally and try this particular bottle and see if you like it yourself. And judging by the look of this one, this one seems to be a little bit more ruby colored. Ruby color, um, getting a, a much sweeter kind of berry aroma. Mm-hmm. Very wet on the tongue. I, I, it kind of coats your whole mouth. Mm. Completely different experience in the yeah. first two. Yeah. There's a lot going on there after afterwards too. It kind of dries up at the finish. So it's, it's wet up front and then kind of evaporates towards mm. the end there. Mm. Not a lot of aftertaste. So that's no. actually good to know because yeah. this would pair well with certain types of food where you don't want to still keep tasting the wine after you've right. eaten something. But it, it's... Uh, I, I would almost recommend doing this with a chocolate. Interesting. You could, you could make this, uh, not that this is a dessert wine, but you could pair this with chocolate and have the, the sweetness of the chocolate and then you know, just having the wine kind of fade away there. Well, is it wrong of me to say that, it has, that this sort of has a sweetness to it? Oh, absolutely it does. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's, that's more I'm of a... I'm sure that's one of those terms it that is. you use. Okay. It is, it's, and yeah. it's, it's more of a kind of a fruity sweetness. Yes, yes. I have See, to say, this I, is my favorite so far. It is my is favorite? It? Yeah. I don't get the sweetness. I think it's more of a balanced, all-around wine. I don't have anything that's more pronounced in this flavor as compared to the other two. Mm. This is definitely one of the kind of wines that I can drink a little bit more of in the long term. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably say you're right, Ray. I think this is probably one of my favorites so far tonight. Whether or not that will hold up when I go back to the first one, we'll have to wait and see. That's Side great. topic. What is this? That's a wine collar. Mm -hmm. We actually talked about these on our last show. Okay. Uh, when you pour a bottle of wine, sometimes the wine drips down the side of the bottle, mm -hmm. and people get upset because it will stain the tablecloth. Yeah. And so I said there are a couple of different ways you can avoid that. You can pour a bottle of wine and have a, uh, a napkin I've and, seen that. and yep. wipe the bottle. Yep. You can use a wine collar so the drip will hit the collar. Uh, or I found these uh, wine spouts on uh, wineenthusiast.com, mm. and as you can see, there's two lips. So the wine comes oh, yeah. off the first lip, hits the second lip, goes back into the bottle. Okay. So it's, a, it's a great way to keep you from staining your tablecloth. And the collar just... The collar is just it, absorbing it's... whatever yeah. drips down the side of the bottle. Excellent. We've got all kinds of wine gadgets. Boy, I'm here. learning everything tonight. <laughs> now, this is great. So uh, the Spanish version of the first two Argentinian ones, I think, um, is distinctively different. And I like it better. I think I like this one the best of the three also. Yeah, me too. Does it get a thumbs up? It's, this one's getting a thumbs uh, up. Yeah, that, this one's going to get a thumbs up. Or do we do up. that at the end? Bob wants, <laughs> Bob wants to wait tonight and, and uh, do a rating on all three. Protocolo is available both locally in town and I think Liquor Depot has it. Um, it's something they usually keep in stock. So I'm going to say definitely try that one if you get a chance to. And I'm going to finish this All right, one. I've got a question for you, Bob. If you were to rank... In importance, uh, what's the most important thing for you when you look at a wine or look for a wine? Oh, that's easy. Flavor. Flavor. What's the second most important thing for you? Barring a few other things, probably price. Price. Okay. I've had a couple of emails. I only bring this up because uh, someone emailed me and said, I'm con uh, counting calories and I'm really concerned about how many calories are in a, gl wine, a glass of wine and how much am I consuming. So I did a little research and the typical five ounce glass of wine has 25 calories per ounce 
gives you 125 calories. Either in a glass. red or white, pretty much yeah. the same. It's uh, it goes up a little based on the sweetness of the wine. Uh, if you start talking a, a port or a sherry that has a lot of sugar in it, uh, you can almost double that. But for the most part, whites and reds are right around 25 calories per ounce. I found a new wine. This is uh, Skinny Girl. I've heard of it. And this, they got their start with a margarita mix, and you know margaritas are four or five hundred calories a glass. So when they got a hundred calorie margarita, it was a big deal. They've created now a hundred calorie wine. It's not a big difference from 125 down to 100. But we're going to try this. These are California grapes? These are, uh, I believe so. It says California. Yeah, California. The big marketing ploy here is that it's 100 calories a glass. Okay. They don't say anything about flavor, and the price point is 10 to $15 a bottle. All right. So this is about so. 50 calories here. And this is not what you would call a gimmicky wine. This is a wine that's actually trying to accomplish a mission. Well, um, I, I actually am going to call it a gimmick wine. Okay. You well, go I'm ahead and try if it. They're, if they're putting it on the front of the bottle as 100 calories. When you taste that, it's watery. It has no body. Um, I get a little bit of a sour apple in the middle, which I like. Um, but for the, for the most part, it's, it's unremarkable. I, I got to say, like I said, I, I, this is a tough call for me because, you know, I obviously don't like being overly critical. This might be the kind of thing you would serve if you had a picnic for like 100 people and you needed to buy a lot of something. You could, but as I said earlier, this is in the $10 to $15 <laughs> price range. Oh, and we've that had, is that high. Yeah, and we've had wines that are under $10 that are so much better than this. Well, you know, I can understand that because what you're paying for is a reduction in calories. Yeah. So that market, I can see they're going to pay that little bit extra yeah. to have the less calories. Right. So if, you know, if, if calorie count is your only concern, I'm going to recommend the, the white. Uh, but if, if that's a secondary goal for you or a tertiary goal, uh, there are so many other great wines out there that cost less and taste a lot better. And we've had them on the show. Yes, we have. Is that considered a Chardonnay or what type of... Uh... This is a, a blend. Uh, I believe they put four different uh, grape varietals in here. And they, they claim that the, you get uh, some peach and apricot in this. I didn't taste that at all. Uh, I, could, I could get a little bit of that, but it is kind of watery to me. That's, that's the only thing. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, that's, maybe that's good. I mean, you know, if someone were to serve this to me at a party, I would drink it down and, and uh, you know, I wouldn't think it was terrible, yeah. but Let's know. just say this is the type of wine you're going to be sitting down and talking about the coming apocalypse or the coming election <laughs> because there's not really a lot going on there. Not a whole lot. And Skinny Girl makes a red, and they also make a rosé. I did not get the opportunity to try the rosé. Um, the red, uh, we could taste this real quickly if you guys Come want on, to. Let's do yeah, it. we have to give let's that a shot. It. It's the same claim. It's 100 calories. Um, I found it just like the white to be very watery, very weak body, and very bitter. And I, I would call this undrinkable. And this is the same um, price point. Go ahead and try it, but I'm going to call it. <laughs> yeah. I should have waited until you had that. Yeah, he does set us up first. That's pretty funny, actually. Not a good aroma at all. No. And the problem you run into is, you know, they were concentrating so much on getting a wine down to 100 calories for a glass, a five-ounce glass, that they, I think they completely forgot about taste. Yeah, that's pretty much red swill. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nothing going on there. <laughs> that's very oh, bitter. Actually. And I think there's even a little fly floating around in my uh, little glass there. <laughs> oh, Look at that. Boy. Oh, there we go. Mm. Mm -mm. And what type of varietal uh, did you say that was? Um, I, they don't even put that on the bottle. They're, I don't think just, that's they're, in, they're just calling it a red table. It's probably not important. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. you actually poured a little bit too much in my glass. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? You and I'm going to have to finish out. this before I go back to my first one to uh, <laughs> talk about it. So. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a trooper, so I will finish this before I use the glass again. Hmm. How long did you actually get to spend in Argentina, Ray? Argentina, Ray? Uh, for oh, almost a month. Wow. Uh, and uh, it, it was great. It was just an unbelievable place. Um, a place that, um, you know, is on the rise. Uh, they've come out of, you know, decades of dictators and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, m military governments, that type of thing. But, um, but I was very impressed with the country and uh, would love to go back again. Did you bring any wine back? I did 
excitement. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I I went to Italy. We went we went to all the the, the Tuscan towns that had the the wines, and uh, I didn't bring anything back. Oh. And they had they made it so easy for you. You yeah. could you could uh, ship cases of wine home, and they would they would do it for you. I just didn't even think to do it. Oh. I gotta say, we're a little disappointed. I, I know. I, I know. Too. I was hoping to raid your cellar later. But it's funny you know, talking about uh, you know wine and uh, liquor in general and the resurgence of a lot of things, sort of nostalgic. I think you're doing something now uh, with uh, Moonshine, aren't you? You're doing a. Uh... Oh yes. Have you guys heard about uh, Onyx? Onyx, Moonshine? right uh, yeah. in Manchester. It is in Manchester in an old uh, Civil War factory, cool. and they are doing. Um, this, uh, they're using, uh, you know, our, our moonshine recipe, but he distills it about six, seven times. So it's incredibly smooth. It has, uh, I don't know if you guys are whiskey or scotch drinkers. A little bit. But it does have that, um, that kind of afterburn that you get with, with whiskey mm -hmm. or, or scotch. But again, it's very, very smooth, very, very That's clear. I've heard. I've heard a lot of good things. Um, it's, I've heard things. It mixes very well with lots of different, uh, lots of different things. Um, so yeah, yeah, I've, I've done some, done some work with them, done some voiceover work with them. I'm going to be doing some video work with uh, the guys at Onyx right. Moonshine, and uh, yeah, I'm sold. All right. Absolutely. Well, we'll look for that. Yeah. And uh, you know, before we wrap up tonight, I wanted to also. Once again, mention everybody that uh, the West Hartford Gala, the West Hartford Television, is coming up on the 20th. We will be serving wine and tuxedos, both stuff from our cellar and sponsors. And please uh, look into that. Go to West Hartford's uh, Television's webpage and uh, join us because we're fun people to be around. Yeah, we'd love to see you there. And don't forget, you can friend us on Facebook or like us or share us. Uh, we'd love to get any kind of email or suggestions from you through Facebook. And you can watch previous episodes of this show on whctv.org or on youtube.com. So and we're out. always looking for feedback. And before I get the last sign, I'm going to give this one a little bit more pour. Does anybody want to quickly right. join I'll, me? I'll try it real quick. No. All right. Do I have a quick moment to, to do a plug? Yes, you do. Go right ahead. Okay, my band, The Radiation, is oh, playing, absolutely. Uh, playing October 12th at Two Boots in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And we're playing with a, a, a garage band from Los Angeles called The Blind Shake, and it's going to be an awesome night of music. Yep. Ray, I know we'll you're there. great. I know your band's great. And as usual, Jim, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for cheers. joining Thank us. You. And once again, I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And until next time, keep, keep us, us in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.